formidable. How? Well, first of all, this is a learned group. This people, they have um, um, a radio station. They have, I think, if my if my memory serves me correctly, they have two embassies in Portugal and in, in Spain. A radio station they operate in hiding. I don't know if it's in hiding, but at least they reach the, the people that they need to reach. Right? You cannot sweep the grievances, whatever grievances they are airing, you cannot sweep it under, under the carpet. And then for this people, again, for this group to have two embassies in Spain and in Portugal, you cannot, I mean, two of the two groups you cannot, a government does not want to have issues with, uh, would be a group of people who are financially buoyant, the wealthy, and the learned. You cannot ignore them. You know, unlike the other groups, this is a group that they obviously know what they're fighting for. Have dialogue with them. You know, the other day, an army general, I think, um, on TV I was watching, um, was unequivocally um, asking them to stop the protest. As if to say, uh, the inference there is, if you don't stop, you know, you would face the consequences. You cannot do that. The Nigerian army is already spread too thin. You know, I don't even think we have the financial resources right now to even wage another war. Because whether you like it or not, what's going on, especially with Boko Haram, that's, it's war, it's civil war. Happening right before our, our, our eyes. And there are millions, thousands of people who are dying. Thousands of innocent you know, civilians, Niger uh, women, children being displaced, being killed. So if any group feels disenfranchised or alienated, I think the best thing for the government to do is have a dialogue with them. First of all, exhaust every medium, especially when it comes to diplomacy and dialogue. Excuse me, before you, uh, if you need to ask, if you feel that they don't want to listen to you, you know, like, you know, in particular case, um, the, the, the Biafran people, there are lots of indigo leaders across the world in Nigeria. Have those people go talk to these youths, right? Have them, you know, return back to you with reports on what they really need, what they really want, and how the Nigerian government can actually work with them. How can we resolve this issue? Because nobody wants a divide in Nigeria. We don't want the effort to secede. So, 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 so let me just cut you short here. I mean, like you said, they're Leonard and wealthy now, so to speak. But aren't there Leonard ways to solve this issue? And even if you look at the fact that, I mean, if you're looking at dialogue, which you say is a key part of ending these unnecessary pockets of, of dissent, um, if you look at the demands of Boko Haram, they're making unreasonable demands now, so to speak. If you look at, there was also some form of dialogue with the Niger Delta militants. So what if people make unreasonable demands, demands that government can't meet? What then now happens? Well, whether reasonable or unreasonable, listen to them first. Okay, protesting is also, it's a democratic process. So they, they are exerting their democratic, uh, democratic rights. Not if you destroy property. Well, of which has been a feature of the protest. There's always going to be fringe groups in any group. There's always, there's always going to be the rogue groups, those who would want to take advantage um, um, of a cause. Because again, according to, for, according to these people, they're fighting the cause. What would you, what, I mean, I know you're, you're, you're talking about dialogue, but what would you recommend, what would you suggest? I mean, you did, you did all those protests yeah. in the US, in Canada, you're back home now, and if you look at it, I mean, I don't know if you want to still want to go into activism here, apart from your acting career, but also, I mean, if you look at if you look at the history of activists, Adams or Shomale in Edo State, Sheo Sani in Kaduna State, they all end up running for office. Are you planning to toe that line now in rounding up this conversation? No, if if I have the opportunity to serve my country, I would serve. It's just you know, running for political office in Nigeria is you know it's an exclusive club. You know, you have to have I don't have billions of naira. I don't think Adams or Shomale and Sheo Sani had the billions. Again, they... if I have the opportunity, if it comes to serve my country, I would serve my country. I could be living my life you know comfortable in you know in in, in Canada, but it's always been that desire to see how you know I can be a part of you know the solution you know to fix in Nigeria I've always in any capacity if I have the opportunity right now I would serve you know so again talk to the people these are the people who have put you in power talk to them the government should talk again let's come, come back to Biafra talk before it gets out of control Leonard group educated group talk to them because there's obvious they, they didn't wake up one morning to say let's let, let's start protesting you know this this would have taken years of mobilization garnering support from around the world and now they started, they started in Nubai thinking that they spread to Asaba, you know, to um, um, uh, Port Harcourt. You cannot bomb them away. The governor has banned it in Port Harcourt. You can't, you see, that's the thing. You cannot ban it. 
they can call it, you know, they can guise it under peaceful assembly and you cannot disrupt a peaceful assembly. All right, we just have to hold it here. Bobby Obodo, thanks for coming on the program yeah. this afternoon. I wish we could continue. <laughs> and share, oh yes, so, but uh, we have to hold it here. Thank you very much. For me. Well, that's where we are. We take a quick break and when we return, we do see your comments streaming through our social media platforms. We'll take a look at some of them and also review the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Please stay with us. The Constitution certainly said there must be one member of the cabinet from all the states. The Constitution didn't say I must have 36 ministries. So the fifth most viewed video this week is President uh, Mohamed Buhari insisting that some of his ministers will operate without yeah, portfolios. In fourth place, his lawyers representing the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, staging a walkout during the Code of Conduct Tribunal trial. Let me thank you, Senator Ashafa. Revelations by former governor of River State that he has never received a bribe in his lifetime takes the third position. Corruption is very difficult to define. If you're a public officer, and you don't take bribe. I have never taken bribe in my life. But if they send a girl to you and you sleep with the girl and do that favor, you are corrupt. Coming in second position is the drama that occurred in the Red Chamber during the screening of the National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as a minister. Mr. President. For those who have been selected, if they were not involved in corruption, they wouldn't mind. They would even encourage us to get whoever has compromised his position in the trust given to him. And topping the charts is President Muhammadu Buhari maintaining that he wants Nigerians to remember him for fighting corruption. Oh, there you go. Those were the comments that you sent and also the videos that you watched the most in the past week. But while some continue to agitate for a sovereign state of Biafra through protests and the federal government remains adamant on letting the region go, dialogue seems to be the only option out of this quagmire. We draw the curtains here and continue the discussion online via the social media addresses showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I am Victor Mathias.